Nomad BSD is a fantastic mobile FreeBSD OS. It's persistent save, which means that you can do your work, you can save it, unplug it, and it's there for when you plug it into another computer next time. And you can play the odd game too. In this video, I'm going to try to make my own with vanilla FreeBSD for a similar experience. Right, so to get things started, we'll need two USB sticks, a target and an installation USB, both 16 gigabyte and from SanDisk. So we'll plug in the installation USB and boot the system. In this particular case, I have to go to the boot menu to select a USB device. Yours may be different or you may have to do the same, I don't know. And we're gonna install FreeBSD in the usual way, but slightly different. Instead of a hard drive, we're going to install it onto the target USB stick. So we'll just go through the usual initial boot up of the install. There we go. And we select install and go down to select the key map. In my case, I'll need the United Kingdom. Don't need to test it. I'm going to choose a host name. I'm just going to put test USB. You can choose whatever suits you. Uh, deselect kernel debug. I'm going to choose auto ZFS. I'm going to show you why in a minute. And and it's telling me that Z root is already taken, so I'm just going to type in tank. OK. Before I proceed, I'm just going to actually plug in the target USB stick alongside the install, like this. And yeah, that pops up to tell me that a new USB has been plugged in. It does kind of mess up the display a little bit but if you just go down to rescan devices there we go and now if we go into pull type and disks and select stripe because we're not doing a uh, mirror and you will see that there are two da or external storage devices plugged in install media was da0 and we need to target the da1 which is the second usb stick and the reason why we chose zfs is we want to encrypt it because it's a mobile and portable OS. I don't think we need anything else. So we just got encryption selected. And are you sure you want to continue? Yes. There we go. Now it's asking for a strong passphrase. And this is used to protect your encryption keys. So this is where we can actually encrypt our USB stick and stop it from booting up without authorization, which is pretty cool. So we can protect the data that's on it. And we're using Gelly. So it's just going to go through the various things All right asking to set up the root password we're going to choose the network device and ipv4 dhcp yes and there we go uh, ipv6 no not on this occasion and that looks fine and choose no here Go down to Europe. Like I say, you choose the one which uh, fits your location best. BST, skip that. Right. And mouse D, NTP date, and power D, and dump dev, no. And we're just going to choose some at random, clear temp, disable system, syslog D. And we add the users. Perfectly fine with it, yes. Uh, add another user? No. You could, but not on this occasion. I think that's all we need to do. Installation finished. Uh, we just like to reboot, yes. And at the very point that we restart the machine, we will need to unplug the actual installed USB. So with all the finesse of someone with a sledgehammer, I will pull out the Install USB, if I can get hold of it, there we go. And we're leaving in the target. And we're going to boot from that. We'll say menu as before to select USB device. You may not need to do this on your system, but I've, I've got it so I'm not automatically booting from USB. And now it's asking for the Gilly passphrase, which is pretty cool. So I'll just type that in. And it's calculating the decryption key. Shouldn't take too long. There we go. And we can get into the system as normal. And a nice default boot menu. 
So in all intents and purposes, we've installed FreeBSD onto this USB stick, and it will act as if we're using a hard drive. And I'm just going to let it go in real time. It's not the fastest USB stick in the world. It's, um, you know, it's moderate, but the performance is not too bad on them. There we go. Don't take two minutes to uh, get in there. I'm just going to log in. So here we have. We've got a very fresh install of FreeBSD. Now we've got a little bit of work to do so we can get it uh, up to the standards, or near near the standards of NomadBSD. First we're going to do FreeBSD update fetch to get any patches, etc. And there's 13, so it doesn't take two minutes. Apply the patches. And now we're going to install them. Right, now if we just do PKG update, and it will ask to bootstrap it, and pull in the latest package list. Mm, there we go, 31. 1623, not too bad. Now I'm just going to do a quick reboot to make sure that the updates stick. And right, we're back into the system. Go back into root again. I could use duas or set up sudo, but I'm just going to keep it at SU for this. Clear the screen. And just to show that we're on the 13.1 part set 1. Right, we're going to install a bunch of software. We're going to Zorg, LibreOffice, Firefox, and Mate. I mean, this is the basic um, setup, really, that we're going to use. You can, of course, add more to it, and I will. You can add other, you know, other customizations to it if you want, like auto mount, etc. But we'll just keep it basic for now. So, four hundred and eighty. Eight packages, and I will, of course, fast forward the install. Right, we're now going to edit the xinit rc, and we will tell it to exec mate hyphen session. So we can start up mate when we type start x or a login manager. So we're just going to do start x now to test it. And that's very nice. That's the default Mate screen on its all green goodliness. And it looks fine. We'll go down to Mate monitor. Yeah. And there's all the details. So it's very good, yeah. Mate 1.26.0. Right. So now that what works, we're going to uh, just clear the screen. Going to install LightDM and LightDM GTK Greeter. So this is a, a login manager, so we can actually just get to automatically log in when the system boots. So we don't have to type start X. Right, so it's just going to install it. It shouldn't take two minutes. There we go. Next, we're going to edit rc.conf. And here, in order to get things to work, we need to enable dbus. Otherwise, uh, LightDM doesn't like it. So it's dbus underscore enable, yes. And we'll start this service now. So service dbus start. Right. We can test LightDM before we commit it to automatic startup. So see if it works. And there we go. Lovely, lovely. You can, of course, like I say, you can customize things. So we're just going to leave it at the stock uh, look for the moment. And log in to test it, of course. So because we've got the entry in the X in it RC, it starts Marte up. 
And I'll just move that bin down there. But yeah, everything's just nice and uh, flowing as it should be. Right, now that we know that light DM works, uh, oh, I'm just going to change the color of this first because I can't see the text on it, which is typical. Uh, colors, uh, use custom, uh, green on black. Yeah, that's nice. Right, we can see what we're doing now. Now that we know that light DM works, I'm just going to actually put that as automatic start in rc.conf. So I'll go down to the bottom and report light DM underscore enable equals yes. And this will start this EA light DM when we first boot in. Save that. And I think. Let's close that. We'll have a look at LibreOffice just to make sure that that works before we finally commit ourselves. Speed wise, it's not going to be as fast as a hard drive, but it's not slouchy either. That's actually pretty cool. So that looks good. And yeah. Very nice. We're going to shut this down and we're going to reboot. And it should. Start up, log us in, and start the, there we go, start the login manager. Hopefully, yeah, look at that, it's cool. And it's a persistent one too, so if we do any work here, it will save it. The next time we log in, as you can see, because that bin is still moved, things will be there for us to carry on. Now this is only the start of this particular thing. I'm really pleased how it worked out. What am I going to do with it? Well, obviously, when you, uh, if you want to use the internet on any machine that you log into, if it's of the same type of machine, like uh, I've got a whole bunch of uh, Dell Optiplexes, and they tend to use the same interface name, so once it's set up for one, it will work on all of them. But if you want to go into another machine that has a different interface, you're going to have to go into a terminal, go as root, and change it via, you know, by manual changing, or use BSD config and change the network part. And that's the only thing you're going to have to do. I am, I'm sure there is a way that we can automatically change it, but not on this occasion. And what can you do with this live USB? Well, like I say, you can do it to uh, transport your work to wherever you need to do it. Um, you could use it as a rescue USB. You could use it as a a portable gaming USB thing if you wish. I mean, it's whatever. I, I've not really thought about it. I just wanted a, a USB stick I could plug in, get some work done, if I needed to, of course, and plug it into another computer and carry on. So I, I really don't know. Uh, but this is just, just me messing around and coming actually uh, coming up with something that worked. Anyway, hope you found this useful. Hope you found it interesting. If you did, please consider subscribing. And if you do, click that notification bell so, so you don't miss out when we release another video. Anyway, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time. This and every other video on my channel has been made using FreeBSD and open source software.